their motion to approve the minutes of February 4th? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Public comment appears as though there's none. So we'll move along to the report from Chief Simmons. Sure. Um, a lot of this you're going to see here in detail when I do my budget narrative, so I'll just kind of breeze through these things for you. Um, we just completed the quality control of our calendar year 2012 statistics. <coughs> uh, it usually takes about 60 days to, to, to go through that. So I can report to you um, our call load is up uh, 2012, 47,007 calls you went on versus 43,784. A substantial number, but many of that is captured by the new officer accountability procedure we put in place partway through calendar year 11, uh, especially for the uh, midnight shift. Having a very young department, tracking all the people, uh, you know, the, the radio and all the property checks now, as opposed to just doing that as part of the patrol function, so we can track their activities and ensure they're where they're supposed to be and whatnot. So there's probably a few, about maybe a thousand or more of those calls there that the building checks, uh, property checks that they do. Uh, probably the reason we do that is A, for accountability, B, so the sergeants, when they're working along, which is quite often given our staffing, uh, can really hear what these people are up to without having to physically go out there and check them. And when he does check them, we make sure that where they're calling from is where they're calling from. Again, because we have a very young um, and inexperienced department. Is that Sergeant Caputo now? Caputo and Barsh. Because they're usually the lieutenants off on vacation, the sergeants work along and vice versa. And it's hard to go be in the building when you have people in a lot of envy on the street keeping your eye on these young guys. So, uh, very few senior guys to turn to for advice when one calls. So, it's a uh, stresses out their ability to manage. Arrests are up uh, by 68 or 6 percent to uh, 1,184. Accidents have decreased by 99, down from 678 to 579, a decrease of 15 percent. Of course, we had a pretty mild winter, so that uh, accounts for some of that. But uh, we're very, very, very active in our uh, traffic enforcement. As much as every car has got four or three in the radar, they all have the laptops so they can do the vision inquiries, plates, and kind of suspended drivers. Like the offenses, UCR crimes, which are the 10 most serious, uh, were up 7.1% in 2061 last year, uh, up 147 in 2028. That was standard incline of the uh, more serious offenses that we've been involved in and investigated. Uh, so our call load is obviously up, uh, despite of our directive to level fund the budget with a lot of ongoing fixed costs, which I'll talk about when I close here. In terms of the current year budget, we're almost exactly two th uh, thirds of the way through FY13. My ordinary maintenance spending is at 61%, so it's really close on target. Our personal services, uh, two weeks ago, uh, was 55.3%, so the next payroll that will be coming out this week but it's probably right at the two-thirds part, the 66%, so we're on track with that. One area of concern is our overtime. Uh, we're at 83% of our uh, requested expenditure. Uh, we've had four long-term injuries that have been out a lengthy period of time. We've had other minor injuries, uh, and also, again, having a young department, I have a lot of family medical leave for uh, guys and girls having children. So it becomes difficult to try to cover the shifts, keep to our staffing levels so it's appropriate. Uh, and some of it is our commitment to the downtown area that when we talk about next year's budget's going to change. Um, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights we usually put a two-person plain clothes detail out there. Um, they just roam around, deal with quality life issues, drugs, drinking in the parking lots and whatnot. Uh, we haven't been doing that for the winter, we just started it up again, but certainly not normal. July, August, September, October, November, they're out there. We're handling several calls of shift and we're on self initiated calls. Uh, in terms of other highlights, I think we came to you to put appropriation of the capital improvements for $10,000 for the clock trade in program. Originally, it was going to be about 
about 21,000 to fix them. We asked for 10,000. The bids came in. The low bidder was 4,600 dollars. So really a good good idea by Sergeant Caputo who did the research. And uh, we will be updating all 80 eight of our handguns to the modern version instead of just fixing the sights and the springs on the old ones. So that's that's a, a really good plus. You see our new cruisers out there? They've got a lot of acclaim from the citizens. Mm -hmm. I've got, got the emails from it's nice to see cruisers downtown finally. We never used to see them, which we haven't changed our deployment. It's just they're more visible. And people like the design on it. And again that was all an in house design that uh, our people put together. <clears throat> Lieutenant Detective Watson's leaving us on June 3rd. Uh, that starts our cycle of uh, fall uh, promotional exam uh, coming up this spring, actually. Our last exam is over two years old under our new civil service, not civil service rules. We give an exam every two years to keep the candidate list fresh. Where's he going? Retiring. Huh? That's, what I, said. That's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah, you and Jim. Put their heads together and figured out that it was time. So, um, so that will do a ripple effect. <clears throat> You'll also see that reflected in my budget document. It's hard to plug in people's names on my budget for next year when I haven't. We haven't decided who's going to be promoted. So when that document gets published, you'll see there's a there's a unusual line item about the effect of the promotion is actually being a negative, uh, about fifty-five thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars. I was working on that last night, but um, that'll be explained in the FY14 budget. Uh, we did complete the five year narrowband project for all our uh, tower sites uh, and all our portable radios and mobile radios. Uh, the tailings that we use for the bi directional uh, amplifier for our radio system inside the building because we had communication problems. That was actually completed about two months ago and then there was a failure of one of the devices and Motorola just came in and uh, replaced the part that was needed to be replaced. That's back up and running. Community outreach, we're just completing a citizen police academy, over 20 people. Graduations tomorrow night. Uh, over, I said it's over 20 people. We completed 24 ride alongs, attended about 60 different meetings uh, for requests from citizens groups to speak about various topics, weapons, drugs, whether it's fraud, whatever. Community folks that do that work have been out there doing that, as well as some of the dealing with issues, concern, mental health issues, or emotionally disturbed persons in neighborhoods and whatnot. We do a lot of outreach for that. Sex offender registrations, we did over 300 last year. Um, contrary to what other communities are doing, is trying to write ordinances to prevent sex offenders from living in their community. Uh, Sergeant McMahon and others actually work with Hampshire uh, HAP, Hampshire Allowance Program identify single room only housing complexes where there aren't children and other people at risk and then as best as we can pick sex offenders who are not really dangerous sex offenders uh, but give them a place to live so they have a chance of uh, not the very serious ones. A lot of people are classified for two or three crimes in their youth and that carries through with them. We work with their counselors, uh, we work with the SOR board for the detail about these folks and instead of having them be homeless or wandering around, uh, getting some housing uh, that is available that works with the folks that run as a landlord, as an owner. So that's a bright spot. Uh, the jail diversion program, we talked last year about concentrating on a lot of the mental health first aid stuff and critical response and dimension teams. Uh, we continue to train people on that using grant money. We have five people fully trained in that now, and we have five more scheduled for a 40-hour course that's being held in Connecticut coming in. That's all funded by the Department of Public Health as part of their mental health first day, which is kind of the first level. The CRIT stuff is a much more serious level afterwards. So <clears throat> our goal is to get at least 24 officers trained in the CRIT. And it's really paid dividends. And, uh, we have a lot of problematic children in homes. We have two juvenile facilities that have kids that act out. I've got an officer with a broken ankle because he had a kid in the bathroom door down this past weekend with a kid that was trying to hang herself uh, with a belt in the shower. And he was able to, he injured himself, but he was able to get to her. But uh, 
it's all it's also not just that kind of emergency response, but a lot of times they go there and the kid that's locked in a the room, they can talk the kid out, have them, you know, calm down and get CSO involved, get a section twelve issue over the phone because they trust us because we our people are really highly trained in the psychological services. So having a CSO uh, worker come out is really doesn't happen anymore. They talk to the doctors and they know what options are evaluation and what are the risks. They just they fax us a section twelve and whatever the kid or adult and put in the uh believe it just like you uh ties us up less, it solves problems uh, in a much more proactive way. Uh, revenues some of the things we've implemented over the years, the uh, tow fee generated twenty four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars last year. We get a lot of winter, we didn't have a lot of snow tows. The alarm fee ordinance that we implemented to uh, generate eleven thousand dollars, and actually for the first time in a long time, because we started to get the re repeat offenders getting a really high fine, the number of false alarms are going to drop off about six or seven percent. Not a lot, but you know, when we put this in a place that was intended not to make money, it was intended right. to drop the alarms. It never did. So now we have a little creep now. <laughs> so go figure. Um, Might as well collect a little bit while it's happening. Yeah. Motor vehicle sites, uh, 121085 in revenue, and that's on 6,269 citations being written, which is about our average for citations year to year. Our training unit, uh, they accomplished 12,995 hours of training. Uh, cost, 23,695, that was an overtime. 20,478 were feeds, meals, and uh, lodging for the training, a lot of specialized training and whatnot. And I, and I should point out to you that all these things are generated from the different supervisors who are responsible. These are all internal documents, they're not public records. Uh, the detective review, the annual report, the annual report on training, uh, or the statistics that happens, the capital operations report, by use of force, uh, internal affairs, which have a couple of highlights on it. What helps me, my managers, my lieutenants, and my sergeants put all this together uh, for me that help me guide and decide what areas we need to change in, what areas we need to improve in, uh, and how I can bring the budget, what our budget priorities are for the uh, upcoming year. Uh, but part of the training issue, we were in our last year of uh, justice assistance grants, 8000 last year, it's gone. Almost all our money is federal state is going away. The little there was left. I think the only one we have probably is a grant for this upcoming year. I talked to Transportation Park. And it's a $3,500 grant for pedestrian and bicycle education and enforcement, um, which I looked at applying for last year, but we were eligible because we didn't have serious pedestrian and bicycle accidents. I don't know how they make that determination, but we were so low on the, on the, the list of cities and, and towns that we weren't even eligible. Fly. They had great ones, but we didn't have the numbers. We had fatalities. They called down there and uh, I said, who, who decided this is a threshold? Because it doesn't make sense. And they took it out for the shift ran around. So, because uh, you do OUI grant enforcement, you do click it a ticket. Uh, this past year, they see that we're really good the way we spend the money and after in our record, so we still have a good chance of getting that grant. Detective Bureau, again, busier than ever with a higher level of UCR crimes, but they still maintain an 88% clearance rate in the, the serious offenses that they're involved in uh, investigating. So, so the Captain of Operations report uh, of calendar year 12, we've received 24 formal complaints. Uh, Ten of those, after investigation, were sustained with disciplinary action taken. Uh, four were sustained in part, uh, seven were exonerated, and three were found to be unfounded. And in the use of force report, we've had uh, 134, uh, what we call use of force, use of the time, use of O spray, uh, OC spray, use of hands on technique. Uh, the analysis of that is all but one of those 134 were in compliance with policy and training. Uh, and that was the corrective action we took against an officer. Injury reports, and I won't get into attempted suicides, whatever. It just kind of complicates what I'm talking about. Um, 
percent clearance was that mean that? That means they have investigated fully and they cleared the case. Oh, what resolved it one way or another? Yeah. 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 Is there has there been any use of firearms this year? Yeah. Only for I think there was thirty four times that we put down the animals not discharging a firearm. Our use of force requires when you have a firearm, either for a side carry, because you're in a precarious situation or you've got somebody. They have to file the use of force upon uh, the report. Their supervisor reviews it, goes to the defensive tactics instructor. He reviews it to make sure it's compliant with policy and training. Then it comes to the captain and he logs in. Uh, I could probably give you a quick buzz through it. So, anytime you want to holster a firearm, you fill out a report? Yep. Yep. Uh, use a point, name it, firearm at human target is one of the requirements, and not animal kill. 39. Um, use of OC spray, 26. Use of baton, 7. Use of physical force, um, that's non weapon, eyes, that's hands on stuff, 35. Use, sorry, that's 35. Use of physical force resulting in injury to the person. Uh, use of physical force resulting in injury, 104. Officers were injured in 13 of those events. Use of the emergency restraint chair, which is this device we have for really violent folks to get them in the building from the cruiser. And it's like a wheelchair with little straps. Uh, there's a whole training component we have to go to because there's been deaths from people having the straps too tight, suffocated, or like that. That was, used, that was used three times. And then <coughs> use of less lethal, which is a um, Either a pepper ball or the new 40 millimeter launchers uh, was set up last year. Uh, no injuries resulting from that. Their use actually made the person drop the weapons when it's stuck, but it looks pretty nasty. And if you've been in jail or you've been subject to those from many of the correction officers, the OC spray in jails just doesn't work anymore. They can use it, they can fight through it. Our, our people who get sprayed during training so they can know what the effects are. So if you're an experienced guy in and out of jail and Prompt the violence, those so sprays nothing to on the street anymore. These 40 millimeter less lethal projectiles, and they pull out that thing that looks like a mortar. It's like a beam they just, they just or It's a rubber rubber projectile. Yeah. They, they've seen it. They've been in jail. They just go, okay, dude, I'm, I'm good. If you're going put your hands behind your back, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> they don't like that. It's one of the reasons I went to it. They're so successful in the correction side. So. And I think it's a much safer alternative to tasers, in my opinion. And the opinion of my defensive tactics people, because I asked them to research it to see if it was something we should do, and they were unanimous in their decision not to move in that direction. So, um, any other questions about this year? So, I'm sorry, there's 134 use of the force in 2012? Or 2013? Calendar year 2012. Okay. No calendar year 2012. 2012. Got it. Okay. I chair for what did I say? No, there'd be more than 134. I told you. Maybe you. Uh, uh, well, the, the, that was the, the actual use of force. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, one, there's more than 134, but one of the categories was the hands-on use of force, not using a weapon or a baton or a C spray or less lethal. Ah. Call it less lethal. That's last year. Talk about next year. Fiscal year. Um, difficulty struggling with a level funded budget of five million fifty-five and zero forty-five. Uh, it's it's difficult. <clears throat> we have fixed costs that go up. Uh, as part of that, I have to integrate um, the two days of up, uh, two extra payroll days, which is seventeen thousand nine hundred forty-five. Out of that, I had to integrate raises that were uh, uh, to clerical staff and a couple others, non-representatives <coughs> in my department uh, during. 
the calendar year that wasn't budgeted by the level fund, including those increased costs. And uh, the truth of the matter is, there's you know, given such a high percentage of our budget being personal services, uh, there's no place to go but to defund physicians. Uh, we had this conversation with Sue, great, and the mayor. Three vacancies right now, so it's not like laying off someone, but we do have someone in the academy. I have three people looking in the final stages of being hired in Newburgh, Connecticut. So they could go at any day. I've lost three people to other departments this year, and we have three people starting the police academy February 5th, and a week before, one got called to the reserves, and one went to the academy for a week and quit. But we have one there. It leaves me with three vacancies, probably four, depending on what magic the mayor and the finance director can work. So I'm sure they'll be talking to you about ways to try to shore me up, shore the budget, and not just me in the park. Um, so it's, there's an officer shift, could be two officers shift, but the long term injuries, three of which don't see coming back on the horizon. You know, we, we ran, if you saw Johan's presentation about the efficiency to my department, city staff program, uh, how we compare for use of overtime with other departments, how low we are, how efficient we are with so many other operations, and what she presented to you was just a, a, a small piece of all the things she discovered about our department and our, our budget. And is, was that including the trade? Um, what we had for injuries that overtime, overtime going up, or was that oh, prior yeah. to that? No, really that. It was right up until she finished her report. Did <coughs> those, those disability payments come out of your budget? I have to no. pay their, I pay their, their salary. It's not covered by any uh, workers' comp insurance? We get a little bit back, a few hundred dollars, but hardly anything mm -hmm. amounting to what it's costing me to, to keep them going. You know, plus pay the medical bills, which is my budget. Mm -hmm. And these are serious injuries. We have deductible for one, you know, some of the serious stuff. Like uh, one officer who ripped his knee up with the guy with the gun in Pleasant Street. It's been 24 months, and he's going to his third surgery. And we had a fight with the city's insurance company. They said, just disability retirement. Well, good for you. You don't have to pay for anything else. But our, our doctor at AEI, OU, met that. He took a personal interest in this case, took time off to take the officer down to see a friend of his who's the surgeon for the Boston Bruins to look at the knee that MIA said, well, there's no more surgery. And he said, oh, we can fix this. And then try to get MIA to pay for it. It was back and forth, fighting. And um, he's going in for surgery on J.T. And MIA finally agreed to do it. Uh, I was out of my mind. That's easy for you. Just say, yeah, disability. This kid, this kid wants to come back. He's young. Is it the hammer incident? Hmm? Hammer incident? No, this is, no, this is uh, the guy with the gun outside of... Tully's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was a really big physical brawl there with several people. He has to be completely disconnected, nerve damage, etc. The first two operations didn't work. He's just been through hell. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are, but again, that's 24 months, so he was part of that. And there's always the small injuries. Two, two of the three others are backs that need surgery, so uh, they've been on the books for a while. But, uh, so you, you, you think that you're going to be cutting personnel maybe by any vacancies? To I don't, at least three, three are gone. Could be a fourth. If I lose other people, the ability to hire a time eight is difficult. We do have a full because we pretty much exhausted the officer. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I explained to the mayor, uh, as much as we have said that we're committed to downtown, those the officers that are walking downtown on bikes are going to be in cruisers next year. There's not going to be the presence that we have. Uh, we're too busy. We're answering. They're getting in the cars now to answer calls because we're busy. Uh, well, there'll be some fallout from the, the, the merchants, but that's the reality of winter. Uh, no, I remember Mayor Higgins one year let you proactively hire ahead mm -hmm. a little bit and get more people in the process, mm -hmm. and that was not that long ago. And we're because it takes a long time 
to get somebody, I mean, you, send, you choose somebody to send the academy and they bail on you once they get there. Um, so it's almost like you need to have more people and it almost seems you need in the process because you never know when you're going to lose somebody and even somebody you pick. It, it just, they, the attrition is such that you almost got to hire in advance to break even. Almost a year. And again, I, I have not seen an increase in personality. You know, some reasonable objective analysis shows that we should be about 78 to 80 officers to follow up that we have. Yeah. And a budget for 65, and I'll be budgeted for 62. Mm -hmm. okay. And then. Is there any way, if we pay the academy cost, and then for folks who are just finishing the academy and then get a call from another department, um, you know, is there any other. Instead of us assuming that cost, is there any kind of agreement that we could have where folks would assume the cost of a newly hired person? Well, Massachusetts uh, we uh, legal it. counsel, right? Yeah. And they're charging us more. Of course, the MPTC is also requiring in service training and then not funding it anymore. They're just more, we more unfunded paying. mandates. Yeah, we, it's 2700 now, it's going up to 3000 But we end up paying even if someone is right at the tail end of their training and gets a call from another department and gets assumed by another department, there's no cost to that. It would make sense that departments would look at folks who are in the academy already so that they don't have to pay for the training. Well, I've done that. I've taken it from All right, okay, so. <laughs> Like it's like school choice. It goes around comes. How we looked at it, legally, if we could have a binding contract, that once you get through the academy, you have to stay here for two years. You know. Well, some some I mean I know apprenticeship programs that get away with that with uh, folks they train. You know, yeah. they train somebody for four or five years and then they you know go to work for a non-signatory employer. They didn't have to pay for the cost of their four or five years training. Yeah. Well, what was the result of that? Twenty-seven hundred is. Peanuts compared to all the other expenses, and the okay. uniforms and everything else. And the pay. What was the result of the legal question as to whether or not you can do that contractually? You could try to do that, and, and I was more concerned about keeping them here for two years, forcing them into it. And then when you think about, you're gonna some, this person doesn't want to be here, and you're forcing them to stay here. You really want a cranky, angry No, maybe instead to, to shift the cost yeah. to the department that that is hiring the. the uh, Academy training. Yeah, well, for the two we just lost, we get full credit for the first one and partial credit for the second. There's like a sliding fee of any okay. And the second one, like, got a railroad job that paid $21 an hour more and let it lose us. So, mm -hmm. so <laughs> you know, insane. So, I mean, there's 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 the dark clouds on the horizon for well, We don't here. get any compensation from the state when they recruit one of our officers for the yeah. state police. Right. We get Nothing. Tell me if I'm right. Uh, Lincoln, you hire someone and then send them to the academy. You don't just pay for them to go to the academy and see if you want to hire them. No, no. You've got to do... Once we got out of civil service, it allowed me to hire much more proactively laterals and, and other folks. And we have the criteria that we write and requires an associate's degree. That's a bit of an impediment for some people. But we rewrote the entry-level stuff for this next exam for military people to kind of waive that associate's degree requirement to try to pull from the, the veterans that are coming back. So they can explain to us a, an equivalent amount of education that they receive equal to an associate's degree. Uh, so this next exam, why we're giving it, is we probably have a much bigger pool of candidates uh, that come in uh, to take the test and hopefully they have some veterans. So uh, it's, it's and it's not just us, this is a recurring recruitment nightmare. You know, people are hired now and they, they, they go for where the money is. I've had people leave to go to Abbott because they're so much quieter and they're not so busy. I'm like, man, I, I want to be busy. If I'm working on the street, you know. So I go back to Cody Greenfield because it's quieter, because they, they're not so tough on accountability, and, you know. So we're trying to maintain our professional standards. You know, it's almost like maybe we're, our standards are too high, uh, but I don't want a lower quality police officer that we can help it. You know, so you're gonna, like, how can you be a new Brit? $10,000 hiring bonus, $22,000 a year more. 
just got a ton of federal money, a brand new police station, bigger and better than ours, all new cruisers. So you have to live there. <clears throat> or near there. Yeah. That's what I said. The Britons pulling up without people. I mean, it's a bit. But they don't pension plans, not as good. I don't see. But Connecticut, historically, is higher paid anyhow. Base salary, so. Teachers as well. So, there's dark clouds, uh, but we're going to keep plugging away and uh, keep up our recruitment efforts. We're doing three job fairs. We used to do a job, go to the job fair of Eastern Mass, but analyzing all the hires that we got from Eastern Mass, a lot of them went back to Eastern Mass afterwards. So we're not seeing that as very productive. So we're gonna, yeah, we're going to concentrate on the, the central Western Mass area. <clears throat> and then, again, these three hires that we've gone to the academy are like good guys, not the highest scores in the exam, but they're all part time police officers, they all grew up in the area, they all live here. We figure we get the local guys, you know, and one, one leaves from the railroad department, and all the other call the kids, but they are. Uh, got called up. You could deny that. He was a really good candidate. So he'll be, he'll be in the queue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So but when he comes back, who knows what right. the next academy class is? He'll be on one year. Mm -hmm. So, how that fits into that schedule. Um, always a challenge. Year to year to year to year. But we will keep playing away. Any other questions? Lots of ice cream truck. Yeah, we could do that. Um, we recently received these new regulations that the Department of Public Safety promulgated. And like most everything else in the Commonwealth, it's all these rules about requirements to be licensed and permitted as a ice cream truck vendor, but guess who has to do all the work? To do the background checks, to do the permitting, to do that. It's the community. So we took uh, the language, simplified it, and distributed it by email to give you a chance so I won't have to read through it. It's fairly clear cut what it is. Uh, if you got detailed questions about it, and as Councilor Carney said, there's not a whole lot of ice cream vendors here, but we certainly want to regulate them as best as possible. So this would mean like that part stuff that's down at the. Uh, oh, wouldn't, no, it wouldn't be any vendors who were at the fairgrounds for events. No, the definition for their purpose was ice cream. No, well, ice cream truck is any motor vehicle that's just on displaying or offering to sell ice cream. But still, but you parked at the fair. Does it say on public property or? So that's the question. Would that park truck or the, or the Herald's truck, what's that, you know, many events that we have? I would say. Yes. But then, you know, we have all of the other vendors. I mean, it seems like it would be, maybe there would be a way to clarify the language that would exempt some of those, um, um, more all-encompassing events. I, well, why, why, I mean, what's the purpose of this legislation? The so regulatory overreaction to basically sex offenders not the dangerous people selling ice cream kids. Kids. Yeah. 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 Or drugs, man, because that's usually what they do. Some of these trucks, the ones from Connecticut that come up that we chase down, they don't even have a business permit in Massachusetts. So, Chief, do you think this, so this does apply to, to private property, too? The way the, the CMR is over at the state, it looks certainly like it would be. So, it's about the product, it's about ice cream. Well, I mean, instead of onion rings, for example. Right, but they don't, they probably wrote it broadly. Right, and didn't It's more about the vending. Mm -hmm. It's personal. They're thinking the audience to ice cream is kids right. rather than onion rings. Mm -hmm. I remember they got in there when it was at the state level. Yeah, that's exactly what the purpose is. There are, I mean, there are other ordinance, there is other ordinance that the city could pass regarding ice cream trucks. Still have to meet the yeah, well, this regulation. is. I would rather have it be specific for us because if you don't adopt it, 
then I really have no regulatory authority over someone's ice cream here. They could have an East Hampton one. Or they could have none. But the CMR is the rules to do it. The ordinance is the way that can enforce it. So that's why we had to do this. And in fact, this that we drew up, I actually distributed to all the other Western Mass Chiefs, and now Mass Chiefs wants copies of it. Because everybody who's scrambling to do the same thing. And this would be this is better done as ordinance and not as a reg, not as a public health ordinance or anything like that. Uh, public health regulation or anything like that. Correct. There is no penalties, there's no But I think the Board of Health can adopt the regulation. But this has to be done through ordinance. Correct. And well I'm wondering too, like I'm just thinking about the vendors who are regional. So for example, Bart's or Harold's would need to get a separate permit in North Hampton and one for Amherst and one for Greenfield and one for East Hampton and one for North. Which is I mean fifty dollars. I mean Harold's can afford the two hundred dollars to hit four towns, but Yeah, well it's that's to cover our fees for fingerprint, which don't get me into the teacher fingerprint thing, which they pass the regulations over and guess who's gonna get stuck paying for that? You know? You bring hundreds of teachers in to get fingerprinted. I just do finger paint and sure. Whatever, that's, again, unfunded mandates just drive me crazy. And this is kind of what it is. I mean, my hope was that, you know, the language is clear and specific enough for that as a state regs. Uh, you know, I was hoping to get this in place somehow in an expedited manner before the warning it does hit. Uh, but if there's changes in the ordinance you feel are necessary, I think. Putting private property exclusion on would allow. That's why I might even have this because the other ones are private property, so you can't, you can't touch with them. Has there been any communication with us? I mean, I mean, the only vendors that I would think of would be concerned with are the ones that are, you know, long standing business folks in town, like Bells, Barks, former independent. You know, if somebody passes this, you might put them on your list to hire them as police officers. They'd see me, some good people, you know. You're done with your ice cream room. It'll work. <laughs> 11 to 7, you know. <laughs> well, basically, the state said that it's, you know, it's, it's the city or the, whoever you want in the city to, to be the permitting authority. It seems to be permits already. If we could, we right, they're right, they're what you're it. saying is they already are required by mass law now to get a permit. Right. And are they required to get a state permit? So they're required to get a permit in the city where they're registered? The city where they want to conduct oh, business. Oh, where they want to conduct business. So they already have to get a permit in the Amherst and Greenfield and mm -hmm. you know, Hampton, any place that they're going to a fair. Business permit. Right. But, so I, I would say the majority of places that trucks like Barts or Harold's go to are those big events mm -hmm. rather than the little league games. No, they don't. I think they're thinking about the guys that cruise neighborhoods. Right. You know, but there are far so fewer of those here. Yeah, they don't. When they we, have many more reasons, we have many more occasions of Bart's and Harold's being at all the different events we have mm -hmm. at the fairgrounds or up here or than, than we have those inbound parts. But, don't we? My son's 21. I haven't met any of those in a while, so I don't know who's at all these Yeah, years. I mean, any of the. I mean, I, I think as far as frequency goes, the do not parts are much more frequent. Okay, maybe I just haven't seen them. But I'm not down at all the little weekends. So. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, we had okay. trucks with Connecticut plates, Rhode Island plates roaming around. We had no clue who they were. We had no way to regulate. Outside of, said, hey, what you doing? Stop mm -hmm. and check them. And you got a license to drive. See if they're bad street persons. So we'll mark But since they're already required by Mass General Law to get a permit in the city, so one di one distinction you could draw maybe out of ordinance instead of out of public safety and we could move it on to the council and have ordinance discuss would be possibly make a distinction between a truck that whose sole purpose is to transport ice cream versus one that is to sell it while mobile. Except it would have to be consistent with whatever the national law is. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to have a permit to transport it. You just have a Whatever permit to sell it. Law. If you're just driving it between stores, you don't need a permit. Right. That's not it. 
So what I mean is, so what I mean is, if you if you drive it, if 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 it's the Harold's truck, for instance, mm -hmm. and it's just the whole purpose you have the truck, so you can sell ice cream at a okay. event, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're not you're not going to. If someone on the side of the road wants wants ice cream, on you're the not going to pull over. Not stop, right? So th there's a distinction. I don't know if we can if it can be enumerated in the in the language, but there's a distinction between the ding dong car, which will pull over, and the, the ones that are basically taking a product to be sold at one location mm -hmm. later in the day or all day or something. And is that a distinction that it seems like so Councilor Carney wants to draw that distinction and maybe create an exemption, I've got two questions. The first is, is it worth making that exemption? And number two, is that consistent with the state? Right. So I think the truck vending definition fits both. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, is, is it worth making that distinction in order to exempt one kind? Well, not if it, I don't think it's worth making the distinction if it's well, Especially if the statute inconsistent. doesn't make it. We can't make it if the state statute doesn't. Right. Right. The CMR is the CMR. Yeah, so we've got to have it reflect that. They just weren't thinking, they, were, they weren't thinking of the impact on other uh, types of and and things that are, that are killing to grown-ups and not to kids. Yeah, it's, again, just, it's like regulating taxi drivers. You don't want the weird, scary people. I just think it's strange that they're passing. I wonder, I wonder if, if you're caught doing this without a permit, I wonder if they have to confiscate the ice cream. Oh. Maybe we got to get deputized. We can go on patrol over the summer. We don't do perishables either. Com shop confiscate some Lindsay Did you get my question? Did you see my question with the solicitor about? Yeah, you know, I thought about that. And the taxi one completely well, is yeah, similar. Same thing. We issue permits, and you, you've got to give due process of appeal for the not. So whether it comes a permit from the executive branch or whatever. Being able to have the legislative branch do the hearing, I think that's a better separation. Oh, I agree. But I'm just wondering, we, we do that. It is it's slightly different now from the charter, so I wanted to clarify that this is still okay and that the charter doesn't preclude it. I hope it. I, I, I wouldn't expect it would. Well, we, we're, we're, we're overruling the decision of the executive branch. I mean, I think it, it could be. I just I, that, That's why I asked him to, uh, if you would. If you would look into that, because but well, we can overrule a decision with the executive branch. For example, with the budget, you can cut it. Right, but I mean, this is you know, if the separation of powers purposes. I mean, that's I mean, we're expressly allowed to do that by by charter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just I, I think I think it's important for the solicitor to review whether we can do this, and because if not, we have to change this process and the taxi cab process. And um, those are the only ones I know about. Unless you know more, but but I think it's it's, a, it's good. It's a good question to ask because um, we just have to make sure that we can overrule the decision of the executive branch, or, or, or if that's a violation of separation of powers. Well, I, I think it's probably a true definition of due process because if the due process clause, the due process allowance, lies completely in the executive branch, and you can say they're not getting a fair and objective analysis. Or if your your appeal for an action by the executive branch, by extension, me, the legislative legislative branch would say, and they're getting a true objective analysis with no kind of claims of ethical compromise. Right. Well, I agree, but if there, I mean, that there could be a due process issue, but well, in that respect, we're serving as a judicial branch, do a purpose, you know, with legislative, but we were in that capacity being judicial. Oh, right. Being defined as a judicial authority. Right. I mean, there could be something in the state law that allows it, but I just want to make sure that we can still continue to do it or, or not. Could you do that? Well, again, I, maybe we should just assume that since the solicitor has to work on this before it gets to the council, the solicitor will work on it in ordinance and we'll send it. I, I, I'd like to move that we recommend. I mean, I would have to look at filing this, but having you as a co-sponsor. Oh, well, we, what he's asking is if we can sponsor it. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to sponsor, I'd like to have public safety, I'd, I'd move to have public safety sponsor the amendment to 312. Okay. Or is this an amendment, or is it a new, a new, a new uh, this, this new addition to the code, 312, this is okay. All those in favor? Well, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Chief, do you 
Should we try to get this on the agenda for Thursday as a late file? Because if you want to get, want to get it for the warm weather, and we have to at least get it to the and throw it out so it could be. I think it's a Tuesday. It won't be a late file if we do it tomorrow. That's right, it's Monday, so it's fine. We're still under our rules. We're still under our old rules, so it hasn't passed second reading, so it would be a little tough. No, tomorrow we're still within 48 hours. Yeah, so eight hours, or whatever, it'll be, we'll have to wait. Oh, what he's saying is our rules still say Friday at noon. Yeah, we're only on second reading, we haven't passed the new set of rules yet. We're still under the old rules, so it's still Friday, late Friday. Even though public, even though open reading law says 48 hours, our rules say Friday at Till yeah. Friday at 5. So, yeah. Until Thursday at 7. If the rules pass Friday. Thursday, then you're all set. But not not till they pass Thursday. But it's Thursday. not Thursday. It's not Thursday. It's not Thursday. It's still a late. Mm -hmm. It's like a free late. Where I was just going to publish a revised agenda tomorrow because it's still 48 hours before. So the Friday thing was just a convenience. It wasn't a rule. It was in our rules. It was in our rules. But. Mm -hmm. Can I suggest that you uh, ask the council president to put this on the agenda in consultation with the clerk sure. for this for this Thursday. And if it's too much, if, it, if it's too much for this Thursday, then wait. It's, it's, just, okay. it's just for a referral. Right? It's, it's, it's for a referral, yeah. and, and, and we want to get it out because we're going to be referring it out, and it's going to get warm pretty soon. Ice cream knows no season. <laughs> so we we will we all we all yeah it's out of here just right. when it comes to council appreciate that and it's this we can talk you want to put on the March yeah. 11 yeah. ordinance Let's. it's in a hurry yeah fine you just explain it for a moment Break any rules. Since we're already here and we've already talked about it, I can't imagine it would be a lengthy discussion of ordinance. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Six. 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 And it's big. It is. Don't make a date. It's big. Yeah. A lot of public hearings with planning board. Oh, Thanks, Jim. Anything else? Any other questions? Comments? Yeah, the new, the, the, you're finally, have you I finally moved into the new, uh, yep, uh, garage. We're up top. Court started today. Underneath? Yep. They're happy. So they're in there. Um, but no, nobody from Kai showed up. I sent them an email up and a message. So I was out of the office or something Friday. Yep, just some of things finishing up. The boilers are still being a problem, so they're starting to replace everything with those. So. No, no. Today was troubleshooting why outside lines couldn't get into the police department. <laughs> so if you call from outside, you couldn't get in. You would be told that just, well, numbers no longer in service, so then oh, oh. going back and forth. Finally got Verizon in. And they just, before I got here, they called me. I had to go steal a car from somewhere. And go put it in. Two hours. Chief, is it so is the bottom floor of the garage? Court's in there. Court's in there. Right. Court's in there. first thing. We, we only have temporary signs, which, if I start letting people make some weekends use it, they're going to get confused because the other sign is really explicit about proper usage and tells us all about that. It'd be horns nest if I let people in there and try to tell them temporary size. So my decision was to wait, let the court get used to it a little bit, get the permanent signage in, so there's good proper posting as to who can park who when. And because uh, even you watch the camera down there, and it's during during the day people would pull in and park me, look at the sign, and get out. Thank God the construction guys are around. Going, hey, you can't park there. The booms we towed them. It does outside the building. So we had like four other signs made up, put them on orange cones with a stick. They didn't last the weekend. <laughs> really? Yeah, people would pull them off. And, yeah. So let the, the court folks get in there, let Hampshire Cog get in there, and we get the signs, and no one can have a complaint that they get to get it in And it's all, you have cameras inside the garage. 
which is one that's the overlay area. It watches the two garage impound areas, but we can see you know, from those a little bit. So. Getting there, a lot of little things in the punch list to fix, but it's good to almost get it over. Well, you might not get a ticket, but you could wind up on jury duty for the rest of your life if you had those folks. Oh, yeah. Uh, if, yeah. You're, I don't know why your name keeps coming up. Is there any new business? No. Instead of making a mad criminal, they make a parking ticket criminal and get them in front of the district court. Yeah, okay. Who's we'll face that parking ticket? Yeah. Move some more. Second. All fair? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thanks, Chief. Thank you.